Hello everyone, it's me, Dr. Steve Lane, your favourite herpetologist. Today I have something very special to share with you. This box from Toy Many. You may be asking why I'm wearing gloves. Well, the contents of this box are so lifelike that I thought I'd best demonstrate my biosecurity practice just to be on the safe side. So, what's inside you're asking? Well, it's a literal box of frogs. These guys would usually come packaged individually, but I've taken all the wrappers off uh, so that we can see them properly. And it's a bit of a faff to get them off. There are 12 frogs here. I'm gonna go through all of them individually. The first of which is this little guy here, which is a Darwin's frog. You may have seen these in the news recently, they have been bred at Siddersill London Zoo. They are critically endangered, threatened by the amphibian chytrid fungus. And this guy, although he looks a bit grumpy, is a really good representation of a Darwin frog. Slightly larger than life size, but this captures Darwin frogs really well. So I am generally impressed with that. Next. We have the blue poison dart frog. Again, this guy is slightly larger than life size, but the texture of the skin, the pose, the color mask on these figurines is absolutely splendid. And even the detail on the toes here is very lifelike. So other than this guy being uh, about a third or two larger than he should be, this is an extremely good figurine of a frog. Uh, and probably one of my favorite in this set. Next, we have uh, Wallace's Flying Frog, uh, actually glide, they don't fly unfortunately, but this, as you can see, is in the act of gliding. They spread their limbs out, they spread their toes out, act like a little parachute, and then glide through uh, the treetops away from predators or towards mates. They also do pull this quite interesting face, uh, it's great to see that captured there as well. And again, this one is quite a dynamic pose uh, and the color mask is, is pretty much perfect as well. This looks like uh, Wallace's flying frog in action. Just needs to be suspended for some fishing wire or something for that added bit of effect. Next here is a budget frog. I'm not sure if many of you are familiar with these. You may have seen videos of them in this pose, standing with their hind legs spread out, with their little frog butt, and uh, just screaming. So these guys have these little googly eyes on top of their head, these little uh, buck teeth at the front of here, and when they feel threatened, they would do exactly this. They will stand alert, stand spread, and just scream. It's a little bit unsettling, uh, but of course it is a display of uh, warning uh, people, predators, etc., to stay away because the frog is going uh, to bite you and is armed and dangerous, uh, although they just look derpy to me. We have another poison dart frog here. We have the uh, red and black or orange and black banded poison dart frog. And just like with the blue one, very lifelike in terms of this granular texture on the skin. The color mask is a great job as well. This sculpt looks amazingly well like uh, a poison dart frog and is an extremely good representation of the species. So well done to Toy Money there. You've probably seen them hiding only for the others here, but this is uh, my favorite in this set. This is a white tree frog which uh, some of you may be familiar with. They're quite common in the pet trade. They also live uh, in Australia and are found in, uh, in bathrooms and toilets, etc. The one thing that really makes me love this is the detail of the toes on the underneath of the frog, especially at the front and the back here. Because this is going to be on a surface and you're not going to see them, the sculptors could have quite easily overlooked and missed those, but nope. They kept that detail in which just helps to sell the realism of this model it's a bit smaller uh, than it should be but uh, 
again, I'm sure we can suspend our, uh, our disbelief for a few seconds, especially given that cute little face there as well. Here's another great sculpt, which is the red eye tree frog, a native to South America. Again, a dynamic pose. You can see here that it is crawling forward and the limb proportions are all perfect. The color mask is amazing. Uh, the eyes are that nice vibrant red color uh, as well. And we've got the, uh, the orange tips to the fingers and hands there as well. So that is all spectacular. I'm really impressed in general by all of the species that we've seen so far today. Uh, th these are amazing frogs. Next, we have the Argentine horned frog, which some of you guys may be familiar with is the Pac-Man frog. Again, these guys are quite common in the pet trade. They are sold under the name of Pac-Man frogs. This uh, color here is one of those uh, captive morphs. So this guy is uh, partially albino, which gives them uh, this funky orange and, and yellow color. You can see it has red eyes, uh, but these will sit there in the substrate and wait for insects to come to them. As you can see, they're, they're more head uh, than anything else. At this time uh, of development, this is a, a juvenile. There's slightly more body here, but as they get older, the head to body ratio gets ridiculous. Uh, and they're basically just a walking head at a later point in their life, which I'm sure some of you may be familiar with, especially if you have them as a pet. Uh, and then when something walks by, they will just flick up the tongue and gobble it up, which is exactly what this guy here is doing. So this is a similar species of horned, uh, horned frog. This one is from uh, Suriname. And the detail here is uh, quite exquisite. Not only do we have the frog itself, but we can also see these little bits of, uh, of texture and color on the tongue. We look inside the mouth. There's quite a bit of detail in there as well, if it will focus. But again, like with the red eye tree frog, this is quite a dynamic pose. And uh, the great thing about this set is that not the frogs aren't just sitting around doing nothing. Most of them are caught in the act uh, of something they will be doing in nature, like feeding, like walking around, or in the case of this strawberry poison dart frog, of calling. So we can see that this one's a male, this uh, bulbous thing on the underneath of the frog here is its vocal sac, which has uh, become enlarged because if this frog was uh, real, then that vocal sac would be uh, helping it to amplify the noise coming uh, from the frog to help it attract a mate. So most people know uh, birds make noises, frogs also make them uh, in order to attract mates, defend territories, and all of that sort of fun stuff as well. And so the color mask here is perfect. These guys, as you can tell, look a bit like Spider-Man with the red and the dark blue. Uh, but again, this is slightly larger than life size. These guys are, are quite small uh, and quite toxic. And finally, for those that are counting, uh, we have the last two species. And so we have another poison dart frog. This is the bumblebee poison dart frog. As you can tell, uh, it is red and black. It uh, resembles a bumblebee, hence its name. For some reason, mine has an extra smudge uh, behind this eye here. Uh, but I'm going to take that as a bit of, uh, you know, inventive and artistic license there uh, from the uh, the colour masking process. Again, this pose is characteristic for this species. The colours are are perfect, and if you left this somewhere uh, and you know took a few steps back, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that that is a model. So well done there to Toy Money. Okay, onto the final frog. I've perhaps saved one of the best for last. And here it is. This is the American bullfrog. A species that has been introduced to a number of countries. One of the reasons being is a very large frog. So this toy isn't representative of that size. These uh, legs it has are the reason for its introduction. They have been bred in their millions to satisfy uh, the frog leg market. And unfortunately, some of them have then escaped those breeding facilities and spread diseases to native amphibians 
or uh, they have directly predated on them and, and outcompeted them, which is a shame. However, in their native range, uh, they're doing quite well. And the reason why they are called bullfrogs is they make a sound that sounds a little bit like a cow. As you can see, pretty fine detail here. Again, great texture on the skin. That's often hard to achieve on models like this, especially at this scale. This coloration is great. Uh, got all the detail here, so we've got the, uh, the eardrum here, the tympanum, we have that fold behind the eye, uh, and again we have the, the detail underneath the feet with the toes here at the front and at the back, which could be quite easily uh, have missed or skipped depending on the, uh, depending on, on the sculptor's choice, so quite a, a decent addition there. So that is Toy Mini's box of frogs uh, and I must thank them for sending me this uh, to review and if you'd like to purchase one of these boxes or any of the models singly then please do uh, visit the links in the description and I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on this and whether or not you've bought a set uh, and which frog is your favourite. Thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one.